the fakery, even better than the real thing. Many of our kind, admittedly not all, strive to be the best. We want to be the best for all to see, and this is very important to the narcissist. We need to be even better than the real thing in order to achieve the prime aims, fuel, control, character traits and residual benefits. For us, being the number one is what it's all about. We need to win. Achieving success is integral to our needs and our outlook. There are numerous ways we do this to achieve this success, and these methods are not just confined to our kind. Sometimes it's about being first. Not coming first, but being the first to act, for example, being the first to seduce you in the way that we have. The first to amaze you and draw you close. The first person to ever treat you that way. The first to say certain things, take you to certain places. The first to make you feel the way that you do. And this will secure the win at times. On other occasions it is about being the smartest, and certainly those from the cerebral chapter of our organisation bristle with their intellectual magnificent. Razor-sharp minds help cerebral narcissists scheme, plot and plan so that what they want is achieved through the careful application of brain power. This also will occur with the elite cadre also and, dependent upon the relevant school, with somatic, but less so. More often than not, however, we achieve this success, the achievement of the prime aims, by cheating. We cheat by identifying those who we want to be like, those people we regard as natural companions for thrusting dynamic people like ourselves. Remember, where this is done by lesser or mid-range, this is done unconsciously. But where greater narcissists are ultra, this is a conscious step. Those leaders, pioneers and achievers are our natural bedmates and we make it our aim to ingratiate ourselves with them. Where charm and magnetism are available to the relevant narcissist, we worm our way into these circles and once there we steal certain characteristics we regard as desirable and use them as part of our construct which we show to the world at large. See the video Character Trader Acquisition for more. Accordingly, the achievements of sports people, artists, writers, industrialists, financiers, professionals and so on become our achievements. The traits that they exhibit of excellence, success and brilliance are copied and added to our construct so that we portray them to others. They either embellish existing greatness or completely fabricate it. It isn't just pop stars, captains of industry and polymaths that we do this with. It includes you as well. Now, you may well happen to be the manager of a successful hedge fund, a championship-winning equestrian, or a well-known broadcaster. If that is the case, so much the better. But even if you might not belong to the ranks of the great and the good, you will still serve a purpose for us. Leaving aside the requirements of fuel and control, which are naturally the most important aspects of the prime aims, you also serve a valuable purpose in providing us with traits too. It might not be for the repeated trophies you won playing hockey or football, but your emotional achievements are very much prized by our kind. As I mentioned before, in order to secure the win, we will aim to be first, the smartest, or ultimately cheat. We invariably have a primary source of fuel attached to us, save in the most advanced of our kind, and only for a relatively short period of time, or in the most desperate of circumstances. And that means that for the narcissist, there is always somebody from whom we can purloin your emotional traits. We are, as I've explained, unable to feel many of these emotions, but it is necessary for us to be able to replicate them. There is nobody better than someone from the empath family to assist us with this valuable task. Attuned to the world and the feelings of those around you, you are able to experience a wide range of emotions, and to a heightened extent as well. This is fascinating for our kind, and we will observe you exhibit those emotions so we can study, replicate, and use them for our own purposes. You are, in effect, training us by showing us how these emotional expressions sound and appear. The movement of the eyes, the setting of the jaw, the curling of the lips, 
the flaring of the nostrils, the raising of the eyebrows, the lowering of tone, the expansive arm gestures, a thousand upon a thousand different combinations to relay a vast array of emotions, and we are keen students. You demonstrate then to us. It is especially those which emanate from the positive range of the spectrum that we seize on, expressions of happiness, joy, ecstasy, love, compassion, caring and kindness. Show us guilt, remorse and regret. Demonstrate to us delight, wonder and warmth, and we will lap up how to compose those features applicable to the appropriate school of narcissists that we are. Some narcissists don't always get it right straight away, but we are invariably fast learners, and we steal these emotional traits and add them to our range of masks. We never get at it as seamless as you. There's often a delay. It's only a very short one, and it's one that you have to watch for. But it's there, all right. A delay as we work out which expression to adopt, which emotion to fake, and then we work it out. Set our expression accordingly and proceed. Remember, this happens unconsciously and instinctively where dealing with a lesser or mid-range narcissist, and it's calculated and aware where you're dealing with a greater or the ultra. These emotional traits come from you, our empathic primary source. Whilst the trappings of apparent success and achievement might be stolen from those people who we have secured a social alignment with, the emotional theft will come from you because you're a fountain of emotion, and this is of course why you've been chosen. The cheating at the portrayal of emotions then allows us to appear more like you and other people. It grants us access to further targets. It enables us to move amongst you with greater ease, scoping out potential victims and drawing fuel as we show we're just like everyone else you know, only more special. It's a clear cheat, but a necessary one, to enable us to secure the win. This cheating to secure the win doesn't end with this emotional robbery. It continues through everything we do. We are not known for our patience. There's a pressing need for control. There's an urgent need for fuel. There is a desire to entrap you, him and her, lining up all the various sources of fuel, and we want them in place and functioning, quick sharp. You take your time to develop relationships. A repeated exposure through positions of mutual interest and the natural reflection of time enable you to develop friendships, familial ties, working bonds and romantic attachments founded on genuine emotional empathy. The rate at which these progress varies from person to person as well as with reference to the type of relationship. But it's safe to say that the normal, healthy, empathic relationships always lag behind the pace at which we operate. We fall in love within two dates. We're best friends with someone we only met last week. Our team at work is the best ever, even though they were only put together a month ago. It doesn't matter to us, because our perception of time is different to yours. We move at a far quicker pace, and therefore everything needs to happen within a short time scale in order to allow us to succeed. To accelerate the cementation of these various relationships means we have to cheat. We cheat by pretending that we love you. Again, remember, this is unconscious and unaware in the majority of narcissists. We cheat by pretending to love you beyond anything else the world has ever known. We cheat by finding out lots about you and pretending that there is a spiritual connection between you and me. We cheat by bribing you with flattery, compliments, gifts and fabricated passion. We push the relationship, whether intimate, friend or working, along at a frantic pace. But it just seems exciting and breathtaking to you, so there's no sense of alarm. And remember, of course, emotional thinking is doing its job obscuring. We cheat because we cannot, and indeed we don't know how to, allow a relationship to evolve at a natural pace in an organic way. It must be forced hurried along, manipulated. Our relationships come fully formed from the spawning vat. They aren't born and grow and develop. This enables us to create our coterie of supporters, our loyal lieutenants and our facade in double quick time so that the flow of fuel and the assertion of control is in place and extensive and thus we achieve the win. We appear popular, successful and magnetic as we cheat our way to gather traits from everyone else 
and create near enough ready-made relationships, at least in our minds, to secure that all-important win. Yes, there are those of us at the upper echelon who are first in what we do, based upon genuine ability, which then other aspects are bolted onto. There are many of us who are certainly smart and magnetic and charismatic and high achievers and apply our considerable minds to achieving great things. But it is without doubt an ever-present amongst our kind that in order to secure the win and ensure that we are even better than the real thing to you and everyone else, we engage in this cheating fakery. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.